The views and opinions expressed on any programme are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the programme and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Well, hello. Welcome to Spindle City Street Talk. I'm Chip. And I'm Chip. And it is Friday in the Red. And again, we begin our show with the Commander COVID report. Yeah, you know, the, the state came out with the COVID numbers very late last night. As a matter of fact, I didn't post them until 1 o'clock this morning. That tells you how late they were. Uh, but the state numbers as of yesterday was 107,683 total cases with 270 new cases, 8,768 deaths with 16 new deaths, and 8,761 cases in Bristol County. In Fall River, which is very interesting, we had 1,714 cases confirmed, with, which is up from six. We have had no new deaths, and they remain at 114. So yeah. there you go with the COVID numbers. Well, I guess it's a good thing that we no new deaths. I think that's the key. The key is that uh, I, you know, when we look at these numbers, this, you know, the ongoing debate is that these numbers are increasing because the testing is 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 getting more people tested. So we're getting more accurate numbers. Not it's not like there's uh, some uh, you know, other cause, it's a lot of the testing. And of course, we all know where social distances, distancing isn't being practiced. And, but the key is that it seems like, uh, uh, gratefully, that the, uh, we're not seeing as many deaths. Maybe not only are we, uh, is it beginning to wane, but also, I think they're beginning to really get a little bit better handle on treating this disease. I think they're, they're using uh, some of the new stuff. Uh, they also have different treatment. Uh, they learned a little bit, uh, I think, how to, uh, how to attack this virus and, and be successful. So we'll see. Well, that's, you know, it's true. At least we're not Florida or Texas or California where they're, they're having a resurgence of this disease because massachusetts is like rhode island is doing the right thing and hopefully it stays that way but but i don't know if you heard the story about the uh backyard party in chatham somebody no. had somebody had the virus there and it blew up a lot of people from that party all got the uh the virus and they went running around with it and that was not a good thing because they started spreading it to family members so that's it let's quarantine the king well they didn't quarantine themselves obviously so it makes for an interesting makes for an interesting time when you ignore the fact that they did indeed um have a party they weren't wearing masks because they thought they were immune to this disease and all of a sudden they get slammed and this is why we talk about this that everyone wants to have their house party everyone wants to have their family over their friends over they want to have their cookouts it's the summer this is what we do but guess what this is what we do it can blow up in your face and cause you to be infected so remember that when you decide to do that you want to complain about school opening and that how it's unsafe to open schools and we can't open schools this way kids will get sick I'm not going to go back to work at school, da, da 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 da. But you're willing to have a house party, or a yard party, or a cookout, or whatever. That's it. you can't have it both ways. You cannot have it both ways. It's one way or the other, and that's the way it is. Like it or not, it's one way or the other. Yeah, you're right, CJ. Uh, well, I think a lot of this has to do with lack of consideration from some people. A lot of the people who do this. 
uh, they are to they're totally inconsiderate. They, you know, they probably, I'd say some of them, actually know what they're doing, but they're saying, well, if I get, it's not going to kill me. Uh, they've proven that they're fairly young and fairly healthy. The symptoms are, are, are mild and minimal in most cases. Not all, but most. So they go, what the hell's worse that can happen? I have the sniffles, a little fever, I'll feel bad for a couple of days, and it's all over. And they don't care. And they don't consider the fact that, you know, when they go out and party, they're not concerned if they get it. They're not concerned if they spread it. So it's a lack of consideration. You know, and America is probably the worst country in the world for following directions because uh, they think that they can basically, the Constitution gives them a right to ignore anything they want, even things that are in the, in, in the realm of public health. This is something that should be done by everybody. But the fact is that if you're not going to really get that sick, as you said, how far is this going to spread? It's because so people who attended that party at Chatham now go out into their communities and disperse and spread it to who knows how many more, and they spread it to how many more, and it's a multiplier for sure. And that's how we end up with tremendous amounts of uh, infections and hot spots growing again because you know the virus doesn't care who who takes it and carries it. Uh, it's going to go. It's going along for the ride. And it's a total lack of consideration for people. If people just did. They talk about Europe, how Europe has done so much better. Well, people in Europe normally follow directions better than people in the United States. Because over there, they're not defunding the police. Over there, they tell you to stay in your house and you don't, you're probably going to get arrested. So this is the problem we have. It's the problem, obviously, virus... You know, a virus will always be a virus, and a bacteria will always be a bacteria. But the fact is, it's people, and people will always be people, and they don't care. They're just inconsiderate. That's in my opinion. Well, people tend to be silly, <laughs> to put it yeah. bluntly, yes. and so, because they think they're all immune. We received a press release from the mayor. He's having a press conference this morning at 11 a.m. Um, with uh, Meg Rogers, communications coordinator for the United Way of Greater Fall River, Nathaniel Gonsolo, communications coordinator at Citizens for Citizens, along with the mayor. They'll be discussing the state of Fall River census efforts and what is at stake for the city and what actions will be taken to boost Fall River census response. Ms. Rogers will be highlighting United Way's United We Count, United We Vote campaign, Mayor Coogan's Census Task Force, a group of young people dedicated to census outreach, will be on hand to answer questions about the census and census weekend, and the press conference will take place in Government Center Atrium. In addition, the census weekend, citywide cleanup will be meeting at Government Center at 9 a.m. on Saturday, July 25th. Residents can also meet at two alternative meetup locations at the corner of Middle and Broadway at Kennedy Park, and at the corner of Wamsutta and Crookeshan Street at the Kathy Asad Park. Interested volunteers should contact Elaine Paviti at the mayor's office. It's going to be interesting. Um, the mayor also has going on for this weekend with the census weekend. Um, free Dell's Lemonade. It starts today, by the way. Um, there's going to be Free Dell's Lemonade uh, down at Bicentennial Park today. Uh, later on uh, in the afternoon, and they have tablets and whatnot, so you can actually uh, enter your census data there. Uh, they'll have tablets at all the events. Uh, Saturday at Lafayette Park, they'll be giving away free Dell's lemonade and some census swag. And with that, Saturday, there will be a drive through at Durfee High School. Hey, yay, drive through at Durfee High School with Toy Story 4 as the movie. It's $5 to get in, and there will be proper, space, proper spacing of the cars. Here's my question. Where's the $5 going? 
the bathrooms at Durfee are going to be open for use, but who's cleaning the bathrooms in between usage? There's a lot of things that are not being done um, for this event, and people started talking about it, of course, on Facebook. Uh, Nikki Madeiras brought it up, and she said, you know, Burr's, Burr's always does its does us proud doesn't it thank you to all those involved in making the impo making it impossible for families without cars to be a part of the amazing event this is a census weekend event why is there a fee to attend and where is that money going she asks all the time and mr mayor people want to know where's the money going so i'm going to send out a request to the mayor's office this morning to find out where the money is going. Um, I have suspicion they're probably going to use that money to pay the licensing fee of the film. Um, I know when I was involved with uh, movies in the park with Carlos, he would have to pay licensing fees to show the films in the park. And it was always necessary to raise the money for that. Carlos was always lucky. He got CBA to pay for the licensing fees as long as it was in a park in a designated neighborhood, uh, which Lafayette Park was always a designated neighborhood. So that worked out nicely. But you've got people uh, asking a lot of questions. Good questions. Not only the $5, why can't this be free? No money in CBA? Food and bathrooms for children in, for, for, for the drive-in. Did the Board of Health have any input? Will that be cleaned? We are in a pandemic. Hello, <laughs> that was from Marcy Yekin. The comments go on and on, pointing out all of these things, which obviously the mayor did not consider. And again, you have a mayor that I firmly believe has the opinion that he's the mayor, he can do what he wants. And I have a problem with that, especially when there's another department head in the city who has already said to a subordinate, I can do what I want. That's not what people are supposed to be saying. That's intimidation. And that's not supposed to be happening. It's got to stop. Fall River has got to take the bull by the horns. Well, and you're right. It stop you know, know. It's never going to stop. Yeah, you're right, CJ. Very good questions. I think the CDA uh, cannot qualify for CDA to have anything in birth because the North End is not a designated neighborhood. It's. Well, I don't, they, I don't know if Murphy makes the CDA. money like we do with fire apparatus. We couldn't put brand new fire apparatus, board, which for all the fire apparatus moment. It, uh, not with those uh, grants. We couldn't put the new apparatus in, in the North End station because the North End is not one of the designated neighborhoods. They're uh, they, they in construction. So if they're, having, if they're looking for CDA money, uh, I don't believe they can give them CDA money for something that's occurring in the neighborhood that's not designated. So that's one, maybe the answer to one of those. But all the other questions, obviously, the healthcare questions and everything else, are extremely valid questions. And, uh, you know, if they are collecting the money, you think that, uh, you know, it might, it should have been on, on the press release. It should have said, a, you know, a nominal... Uh, a nominal fee will be charged five dollars in order to pay for the licensing fees, et cetera, for the movies and and whatever. But I, you know, I, I think it's better to be preemptive most of the time and then do something like this and then have everybody ask all these very good questions. Which and look, you can't answer every question. We both, you and I, have both been there, done that. No matter what you do, you can't answer every question and, and consider every possibility but you can take away a lot of the questions uh, by doing some very initial preemptive work and stuff like you know if you're going to charge money tell them why you're charging them money uh so these are the kind of things that you really should do and uh you know in my opinion you really actually have to do this if you don't want all kinds of grief and controversy and innuendo flying around i hear you i i you know and and again we we fight 
a battle that seems to be never ending. The mayor knows what needs to be done, as do other department heads, in regards to dealing with the public, in regards to even opening the bathrooms here. I mean, so it's okay for other people to make sure they do it, but it's not okay for the city to do it. That can't be the way it works. It can never work that way. And using tactics where people have no idea and not providing the information that's requested, because I know the mayor follows everything on Facebook, just like he follows our show. I know the mayor follows everything on Facebook. And when these questions are asked, he never responds. He never responds, which would be a rapid response, which would handle it very easily. Um, I, I've said it before. I'll say it again. This mayor tends to be non-confrontational publicly. Privately is another story. Uh, but we have to look at that. And now we're going to look at the fact that we got to open the schools. What are we going to do with that? What are we going to do with opening the schools? Because they're saying we can't open the schools uh, properly uh, with everyone going back to school because it may not be safe. Okay, it may not be safe, but it may not be safe for people to use the bathrooms at Jerpy for the, the drive-in. So we can do, but we can do that. Has the Jerpy building been cleaned already? Because if it's been cleaned already, we're not supposed to be in the building at all. So people need to understand. You have to explain yourself when you're doing this. Um, I mean, I've seen the DESE recommendations. And I, as I think I said on Wednesday's show, I requested from the superintendent of schools the preliminary plan that he has to reopen schools. He still hasn't hasn't provided it to me because um, he says it's in PDF format. All it takes to provide it to me is to put it in the email, and I would get it. Um, so there's something going on there, uh, whether that be because of DESE or because the plans changed again and he needs to update the plan. I don't know. I'm not going to say it's a deliberate attempt to not provide the information, but that wouldn't be the first time that some department in the city has had a deliberate attempt to not provide the information. Um, but I've got an, I told you so coming up and I got to I got to get this in right now. DESE just came out with the school bus guidelines. Did you see them? Not yet. No, I haven't looked at it. One student per seat. One student per seat. And they must be six feet apart. So you'll have two kids at each end of the seat next to the windows. Then you'll have two kids in the at the two seats next to the aisle. And they'll go back and forth like this. One per bench, obviously. Which can cut the bus uh capacity down to one third of what it normally is and what does that mean who said it would be down to one third who said that it would be three more buses who said that it's going to cost us more money i think i did but nobody listens to cj <laughs> well it also means three trips rather than one to get the same amount of people and there are a whole bunch of other things, but as far as the superintendent's concerned, um, I think I've heard, and this is a this is an allegation that the superintendents throughout the state are upset because they're being they're saying they're being held up because they're waiting on definitive uh, uh, guidelines and the okay from the state. So this is another catch-22. They don't want to do anything because they're afraid it won't be in compliance if the state changes their mind. And it gets back into the total chaos that this is this is uh, resulted in this COVID virus. And you know, as as we said, they don't want to go back to school because it's unsafe yet. They want to point to Europe and say, look, they're doing better than us. Yet in Europe, basically all the school systems are up and running. Some European countries never close their school system. Never. Not for one day. So, you know, this is one of the problems that we have with everything. They pick and choose what they want to listen to. They pick and choose the laws they want all day. 
They pick and choose the directives they want to obey, and they just ignore whatever is inconvenient to them. So this is the problem, and uh, the difference between here and Europe is most of the time the, the, the people in Europe are more conditioned to, to, to obey orders when they get them because over there they're not telling the police that you can get pelted with rocks and bottles and get fireworks shot at you and you can't do anything because uh, these people are, uh, you know, they're peaceful protesters as they're burning, looting, and pillaging. Uh, granted, there are some peaceful protesters, but I think the peaceful protests are long gone. I think, uh, I think last night was the 57th day in Portland, Oregon, and they don't want help. They're saying they're doing fine. Well, you know, the man got tear gas, and uh, uh, the people that he was there to support, they, 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 they're, they're so committed to making a better America that one of them spit on them. Um, they booed them, uh, they berated them, uh, and so they didn't want him there either. They called him a, a Nazi and a fascist, and they wanted him to resign. So this has got nothing to do with protesting. Unfortunately, the death of George Floyd is long in the rearview mirror, and these people are there to create chaos and anarchy. They're there for a, a, their own agenda. And most of these people think this is something new, but uh, it's not. If you look at the riots in the, in the 70s uh, over the Vietnam War, uh, there were a lot. The difference was then the police were allowed to do their job, and you didn't see the number of deaths that have been resulted. Now, the criminals were not emboldened. They did have a lot of demonstrations, a lot of very violent demonstrations. But they were quelled because the police were not. Here. So now uh, they've evolved. Now they figured out, hey, the way we can really create chaos in this country is just get rid of laws. We'll we'll make the laws like we did with Chop, and look how good that lasted. Three weeks, it was gone. You know, they were already killing each other in Chop and, and, and injuring each other. You know, anarchy is not a form of government because in anarchy. You always end up with a dictator and a very, very tyrannical government. Because just look at history. Oh, that's right. We can't look at history. We have to erase it. We can't remember that when uh, when the French Revolution uh, was uh, got rid of the monarchy in France, they got Napoleon Bonaparte, the dictator. When the Russians got rid of the Tsars, they got Joe Stalin. And uh, when Germany was in trouble and went to anarchy, they got it off Hitler. So throughout history, we see that anarchy doesn't work as a form of government. It's ultimately anarchy that ends up in, in total chaos, where only the people with the most guns and the most power take over and become dictators. So this is just irritating me to no end when I see people who were elected to protect the public. The mayor of Portland to protect this city and abide by the laws and they're not only they're not only allowing this kind of violence in many on their streets they're actually enabling it and encouraging for purely political reasons and that's that's just wrong well here's some political reasons which are being done in secret here in Fall River, uh, here, in the state. here in the state. Secret. As we know about the Massachusetts police bill, it's getting secret hearings by the House right now. The Senate's already passed their version. The qualified immunity waters down the standard as applied to state-based claims against law enforcement personnel only. Post, removes existing Mass Police Training Commission and creates a Police Standards and Training Commission a Committee on Police Training and Certification, a Division of po Police Standards, a Division of Police Training and Certification. Only the Commission has authority to certify and decertify police officers. The Commission is comprised of seven members, only two of which are law enforcement and none of which are chiefs. 
chokeholds prohibits law enforcement from using chokeholds in all instances, even in deadly force encounters. Use of force greatly restricts the ability of law enforcement to use force, contrary to the national standards involving use of force set forth by the Supreme Court in Graham versus Connor and Tennessee versus Garner. Chemical weapons restricts the manner in which officers may utilize chemical weapons, which may include OC. Knockout warrant, not no knock warrants, greatly restricts the ability of law enforcement to obtain no knock warrants that would ordinarily be obtained pursuant to established case law. This was posted by Chris Peckham about three hours ago, because this is going on right now as we speak. So remember, your police are going to be restricted. And one of the problems, and Chris says this in, in his posting about this, um, he says it's disgusting, disheartening, dangerous, and deadly. The only words that come to mind. This bill is absolute trash. It will, A, get an officer killed. B, despite our police department's number, deplete our police department's numbers, officers will retire or quit and children will stop growing up wanting to become police officers. C, take away OC. Is that a less than lethal solution? Great idea, diminishing less than lethal options while trying to hand, while tying the hands of the, of the deadly force only. This was a gen genius idea. Oh, and you can't utilize a chokehold while someone's attempting to kill you. Got it? It's very interesting to see how he is on this. Um, but again, this is a, another thing done in secret. So. Yeah, of course they're going to do it in secret. Now, I, I'm listening to the commission. So who do you think is going to appoint the commission? It's going to be the politicians. Of and course. the politicians are going to appoint the people who, who are who live in gated communities, can hire their own security forces, and don't care that the people who live in dangerous cities like Fall River and, and who live in places like the south side of Chicago are going to have police officers that, that have a chokehold on them. The fact is that is the most ludicrous thing I've ever heard. You cannot use a chokehold in a deadly force. So if somebody's trying to kill you, somebody's choking you to death, but you can't Put a chokehold on him to save your own life or save someone else's life. That is absolute crap. That is not. What's the next step? Anybody who joins the military from Massachusetts is not allowed to use a chokehold in combat against an enemy. I mean, this is this is beyond bullshit. This is just beyond. This is the typical Massachusetts libtard knee jerk reaction to everything. And all of these Democratic, Democratic reps and senators should be gone in the next election. So, Chris Peckham, get people to run. Get people to run for these offices and get the police officers to support them and the community who live in these places that are going to be victimized by the police being hamstrung. Do I believe we need police reform? Not to a degree. But I think what we need more is we need people to oversee the actions of individual police officers. You can, you know, you're throwing out the baby with the backwater. The fact is you don't condemn all of law enforcement for the actions of a minuscule part of law enforcement. This is absolutely ridiculous. And if I could, I, if I could get in a helicopter and get away with it, I'd fly over to State House and take a dump on it. I hear you, Chip. And uh, we're, we're out of time, so you got the final word on that. Hey, everyone, thanks for watching. Have a good weekend. Fill out your census online or go to one of the census uh, outreach areas and stay safe, stay angry, and have a great weekend.